Hello, this is Evan Crane. Today I'm going to show you how to sync users into the Google Admin Console for the purposes of using other Google services, namely Google Cloud Platform. So today you'll see that I have just one user uh, in my Admin Console in that I have no groups. So we will use these two functions uh, to manage permissions in the Google Cloud Platform uh, after they are synced here in Google Admin. Uh, so for the purposes uh, of users out there who will be doing the same thing, you'll need to verify your domains. So in the domain panel, we can see here that, see here that I have verified cranedemo.com. That's my primary domain. And then we have evancrane.com, which will serve as a secondary here. So if it's a large enterprise and you have many domains, you'll need to verify each of them here. So now that we've done this, I'm gonna switch over to our third party, our ID provider in this case. Uh, so we'll go over, uh, and this is a Windows Server 2012 edition running Active Directory. So we have our system here with ADFS and domain services. So I'm going to open up uh, Active Directory so that we can see our users and groups that we'd like to sync. So this is my org unit, GCP OU, uh, in my crane demo domain. So um, for the purposes of this demo, we have three users. We have uh, Alice, we have Bob, and we have this so named alternate, which we see here is at the other domain. So we want to prove that we can do multiple domains uh, and that these groups will sync as well as Alice is a member of this admin group and Bob is a member of this network group. So now that we've established these are all here, I'm going to go ahead and open up Google Cloud Directory Sync. Now this is the tool that we use to run the synchronization. There's a few steps here. Uh, to authorize, it will essentially kick you back over to the admin console to verify that you are in fact um, trying to run a sync from a remote location. In this case, it's uh, this domain services uh, machine. So I'm going to run down my configuration here. Uh, in this case, we're using Active Directory. Uh, there's a few other standard settings and selections to make there. When we go into general settings, you'll see that there's different uh, aspects of your directory that you can sync. Uh, as we add and remove each of these, we have different panels for them. So we have the org units here you saw just got added when I checked org units. So for today, I'm just going to use user groups, excuse me, user accounts and groups. So when I go down into user accounts, uh, we'll see that we're going to add a search rule uh, to look for different users. So you can add different rules to look for users in different places across your tree. So these are essentially just uh, LDAP configured uh, rules. So you can search for different attributes or, or name different attributes uh, across um, your environment so that they get matched up correctly on the Google admin side. In the tooltip here off to the side, you'll see the default. So for example, the email default is just a mail attribute. For unique identifier, we're using object GUID from Active Directory. This is important as we'll see later when we change someone's name, we wanna make sure that they are not um, deleted and then created as a new user in the sync process. We just wanna modify an existing. So the rest of these I'll leave as default. You can see there's different behaviors you can set there um, when a user is not found. So I'll go ahead down to the bottom here. Um, I'll skip notifications for now, but there are different options there. Uh, for log level, this is something that's nice to, to keep if you want to audit or track or collect your, your logs. Uh, for the sync, I'll come down here. It'll run a validation of everything that needs to be run. You can simulate a sync, which will show you the changes that would be made were you to proceed, uh, or you can actually go ahead and run the sync. So I will do that for now. 
It's warning me that there'll be changes made out on Google domain. I'm going to continue and it's going to start to run the sync. So you'll see that it's uh, scanning the LDAP side here locally. It's scanning the Google data remotely and then applying changes. So in my changes, we had three users created. Um, and then down in our group section, I imagine we'll see, yep, that two groups uh, were created. So, and then they were modified to have these users added to them. So all of this information is available in the logs. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and then go back over to the admin side of things where I can see that in the users panel, uh, I have in fact added a Bob2, a Dominic, and an Alice. Now we'll also see that Dominic is at a different domain here, uh, evancrane.com. So we can, we can handle multiple domains in the same environment, uh, same admin environment, so long as they are all um, confirmed via DNS records. So there's a domain verification process that you'll go through. So the last thing that I wanted to show was the uh, changing of a user. So if I change a user here and I say, instead of Bob, he wants to drop the two and just be Bob. So I'm gonna change the name and the address here and apply this on the Active Directory side. So this has changed in this environment, but now I need to go ahead and sync. Now ideally, if the actual Bob, the person has been using different resources, say in Google Cloud Platform, we want to ensure that it's not deleted and added as a new user because then he would lose access. So we'll actually run the sync here. Uh, it's telling us that it's applying changes. And when we look at the results, we'll see here that one was modified. It was not deleted and then created, it was just one modified. And that it's saying the field was changed on this record to just Bob and Bob. So I'll close this and then refresh over here and we should see these fields change. And there we go. They have updated there. Uh, the other thing we'll check is that the groups synced over as some of these users are members of those groups. So in the group panel, we do see that we in fact have two groups here. Now, you know, it's best practice to use these groups when applying uh, permissions and roles over in Google Cloud Platform. So I'll switch over there now, and we'll see an example of IAM. So this is one of my projects, just CE demo project. So for the purposes of any anything that lives inside this project, I'm gonna assign privilege here. So I will add, uh, this is admin-group at cranedemo.com. Uh, and it'll confirm by turning gray that that is valid. And we'll call them uh, project editor so that they can make changes within the project and save. Now, when those users log into the platform, they will see this project as an option to select on the, the toolbar there. And they'll be able to start making changes as they see fit. And any member, any user who's added to that group will also uh, have that privilege. On the converse, if they are removed from Active Directory or taken away, they will lose access over on this side. And you can schedule uh, in, in your server, your Microsoft server, uh, a task to run the Google Cloud Directory sync uh, as often as you like, uh, so that you can add and take away access um, as you see fit. So the other thing I'll show you here quick is that if I were to do just admin at cranedemo.com, it's gonna say that this is not a real group, this doesn't match anything that we've seen, so it's not gonna allow you to assign access, which makes sense. You can also set policies so that all of these must come from within your organization. Uh, otherwise, you'd be able to assign potentially uh, guests from outside the organization. So uh, that's my demo for today. Um, we'll come back with uh, more in the future as 
questions arise. Thank you for your time.